In this video, I'm going to walk you through the shadows and light exercise, at least the first part of it. Um, I'm in my AutoCAD file, and I'm looking at a drawing from the top view. One thing that you'll find is that um, these selection items help you to sort of navigate through things. So right now I'm on top view, 2D wireframe. I have drawn here, and I'm going to use this navigation tool, the orbit tool. Click on that and hold down the left mouse button. So what I have here is this plan view. I'll go back to my top view. I have a 100 by 100 foot square. Inside that I have a 50 by 50 foot square. And I have a series of closed shapes that will become spaces. Um, this is the largest one. It's a courtyard space, and there's a series of other spaces. Now, connecting those spaces are more rectangles, and they're of various widths. So what I'm going to do with this is to begin making a solid model out of it. Um, the two largest spaces will be extruded to 15 feet. So I'm going to go to, I'm on my 3D modeling workspace, and I'm going to go to the extrude command and I'm going to select this one and this one. And when prompted for a distance, I'm going to input 15 feet. You need to make sure your units have been set to architectural. And if I look at this in 3D, this is what I see. Okay, so this is 2D wireframe. If I want to get a better sense of what it might look like, I can go to a conceptual view. So here I have these two volumes. Okay, now I'm going to go back to top view. Right, and I'm going to begin extruding some of the other forms. Uh, extrude, click on this one, the three other spaces. And the height for this, I'm going to make 10 feet. Now, those connector pieces, those are going to be like corridors or doorways or openings, and I don't want to make them quite as high. I'm going to go back to my 2D wireframe visual style. I'm going to extrude all of them just 8 feet. Keep in mind that you can make these openings bigger or smaller later. Okay, and when it asks me for an extrusion height, I'm going to input 8 feet. All right, let's go back to our conceptual view. And I'm going to spin around and take a look at this. So here I have these volumes, and they have these little connector pieces. Okay, we'll go back to top view. Uh, by the way, you'll notice that I have the properties window open. Um, one way to get to that is to click on something, right click, and open up the properties. Um, one thing that the properties window will tell me, if I click on one of these closed shapes, it will give me the, um, the square footage. So here I have some information right here, so 100,000 square feet, or rather 10,000 square feet. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, so this limits line was just to sort of give myself um, sort of a restraint about how, how big to make these forms or how spread out to make them. I'm going to keep them inside that limits line, but I won't need that for anything beyond this point. So I'm going to go to my layer um, manager and I'm going to turn off that layer. Okay. Now these are all going to be rooms and right now they're solids. So in order to make those into spaces, what I'm going to do is make this a solid and then subtract these elements from this bigger solid. So I'm going to extrude, and you can type this or select this from the ribbon, this outer box, and I'm also going to make that 15 feet high. Okay, now if I go to my front view and I change my visual style to 2D wireframe, here I can see you know the various heights of the objects. This one here and this one here, these are the two large rooms that are um, the same height as this mass. Now this will be a little bit complicated, but what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to shift the, the big mass down so that these two rooms are taller than that big mass. So I use the move command. I can type in M for move. Select this object, this big box. Okay. Press enter. And I want to make sure it's just moving in one direction. So I'm going to click a point anywhere off on the side here, or above or below. And so long as my ortho is set to on, it's going to constrain the movement in the vertical direction. And I'm going to input 36 inches or three feet. So you can see these two uh, rooms are popping through the top of my, my base model. Now what I'm going to do is go back to um, take a look at this in 3D. And I'll zoom out just a little bit. OK, so there, there is the model that I have so far. Here's the larger box and the smaller ones that are inside. Now what I'm going to do is start to subtract these volumes from the big box. Um, the Subtract tool is right here on the ribbon. Click on Subtract. You'll be asked to choose what you want to subtract from. And I want to keep this box, but I'm going to subtract from it. All right. Once I'm done selecting that, I can pick all of them or one at a time. Right now, I'm just going to select one and press Enter. And now if I go to a conceptual view, you can see now that there's this hollow space in my model. All right. I'm going to go back to 2D wireframe, and I'm going to continue to subtract the other objects. OK, pick what I want to subtract from, press Enter, and then begin to select the objects that I would like to be subtracted. So let's do, um, again, I'll just do one at a time right now and change my visual style to conceptual. So here I have this connector. And in order to make a hole between these two spaces, I'm going to use the same subtract process. Pick what I want to subtract from, press Enter, and then click the little um, connector piece. So now there is an opening between the two spaces. Right? So, and I will proceed with subtracting these elements from my solid model. Press Enter, and then begin selecting the volumes and the little connectors. can make a crossing as well. Okay, so it looks like it's made all of them. And let's take a look in conceptual view. Okay, so you won't be able to see very much from these spaces because they're underneath the mass. And we're going to be using this model to study light, so we'll be making openings through the ceiling and um, between walls, so that will allow more light to, to come in. And that's it for this part.